Donald Chubb. So we'll see what happens with the Bonnies. On the other side, Jim Crowley uh, returning for his second stint. Uh, was there for a number of years, right, 2000 uh, to 2016. Uh, now back uh, trying to get the women's basketball program back up to speed, right? Yeah, honestly, a, a three-time A-10 coach of the year. He knows how to win, and I think he can mm -hmm. get it done if he gets the right players. There's four wins last year, but then, you know, hopefully it'll be a little bit different for them uh, this year on the women's side. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back to the press conference. Here he is. Players into the mix. Uh, so having last year only having 10 players, having 14 players this year, that's a, that's a definite thing that, that can help us uh, with our depth, with our versatility. Uh, we have six freshmen and four uh, fifth-year kids. So, so that's a unique combination. And as I said, these guys are doing a great job of developing and, and helping lead those guys in the way we want to play. So uh, I have been very excited uh, with our work ethic so far, uh, our ability to learn. Uh, we've got a long way to go, but, you know, I think we've, we're heading on the right path, and hopefully we'll just we got to stay patient yet demanding with what we ask and um, keep these guys leading the way they are, and uh, we'll, we'll keep growing. Thanks, Coach. Uh, questions from the media. Jim, Zach Weiss, Atlantic10.com. I have to ask you, within last season, what was the biggest takeaway for you personally that you feel shaped this second season for yourself in this second time with the program? Thank you for the question, Zach. Uh, you know, I hit on it a little bit in kind of the opening statement, just the, the resiliency. I mean, by the end, we had seven kids going, um, and, and that was never an excuse. Um, I, I thought we played pretty hard consistently with that. We certainly tried to play the way we wanted to play. We could, and, and we continued to do that even when the ball didn't go in the basket. So I thought that really set a foundation, and, and that carried over into the summer with, with the folks who returned. And um, you know, I thought it also helped make them hungry uh, for, for what we want to do next. Danny, for you, what was your takeaway with, with the program last year, how you embraced Bonaventure basketball, and how you learned those lessons for this season? Um, I think just playing for Coach Crowley, it shows um, the returners this year, we're, we're ready. We have a lot of new players, and I think um, just coming from last year, we're ready to um, build on that and obviously improve. Jim, for you, with the newcomers you mentioned, who has stood out among the values and who has stood out in terms of on court that you expect to have a big role this season? Yeah, all six have, have shown different things uh, that will help us in different ways. Um, I'll be honest with you, they're all, they're all going to play. They're all going to get opportunities. And, you know, while you know one will stand out tonight at practice, Wednesday morning another one will stand out. Um, so, and again, that's, that's normal with youth to find that consistency. But we're finding a couple that are, that are heading there. But I think at different times they're all going to have positive impacts for us. Hey, Coach, you, uh, you, you, Abe Rothstein, WRGW, you brought up you know, having the fifth years come back and then having a bunch of newcomers. Could you just talk a bit about the balance of that and how you're able to balance that as a coach? Yeah, it, it, it's obviously it's a fun thing. It's a, it's a unique thing um, to have the, the four folks who are in their fifth year um, but still are only in their second year with, with our system and, and with playing with, for me. Um, and, and their ability to embrace it that quickly, I think, even helps the younger players lean in. Uh, because they, while they haven't had that four full years or five full years uh, with me, uh, they, they've they embraced it so fast that the young players see that. Um, and just the welcomingness they've had to, to talk to them when they've gone through some things. Um, and the new players' excitement to, to learn from them, but also to challenge them, right? I mean, if we're going to be good, then, then they got to go at each other pretty good. And that competitiveness, uh, you know, is something that, that's happening pretty frequently. Thank you. Danny, could you describe the compete level on the court in practice, just bringing it out of each other and how that has continued to increase and improve amongst the ladies? Yeah, I would say it's a big difference from last year. I mean, we have 14 instead of 10, too, and you can tell each one of us um, really wants to win, and the culture is just different. So I think um, it's just really good to see that we all want the same thing to win, so it's very competitive. Jim, if you could take me through Najeshka Lassine and just how her, she's been able to develop and how she's been able to learn within the principles and continue to grow. 
Yeah, Nadechka is a, is a very talented player um, and, and can do a lot of things and has a willingness to grow. I mean, the biggest thing that, that we've got to help her with is to slow down a little bit, especially she has a tendency when, when something doesn't go her way to really try to make up for it. Um, so she's been very receptive to that. Uh, she can make play. She's a terrific guard, rebounding guard. Um, so we, we, we really have liked her development, and she has just been, like all of them, but she's been just so open to, to the corrections and the, the way we've worked with her. Then also Isabella had a really, really good season last year as well. As she continues to grow, how has she found her next, and how has that been embraced by her teammates? Yeah, I, I think Bella's a throwback. You know, I mean, she's, she's a little undersized. You're not sure what position she plays, but she can just ball. Um, so I think our system works well for her. She's just so competitive, and, um, you know, I think her teammates see that. And, and, again, she's done a great job with embracing her teammates and being a vocal leader. And um, all of these guys have spent more time together, um, and I think that shows our young kids how important that is. Um, you know, Bella has really – she's developed – you know, she's been better around the rim. She's got great pull, but she started to develop her three-point line. She's getting a little post game. Um, so they all know that, that – you know, she's going to compete hard for them and, and can find a bucket in a little different ways. All right. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this season. Thank, Thank you. you. No watch questions. <laughs> Next up on the dance will be... All right. Welcome back inside the studio. Mike Corey, Ice Young, Phil Martelli, as we recap what we heard uh, from St. Bonaventure. And then what were we discussing about Crowley coming back, right? For he knows what it's like there. Mm. Yeah, you know what? Always remember this, Mike. You're, you're way too young to even probably remember this movie. But Dorothy was right in The Wizard of Oz. There's no place like home. Jim Crowley's home, and he's going to make it work, Ice. I know that movie. Come on, Ice. You probably know what it's like in color. I'm talking about black and white. Come on, Ice. Don't be messing with me. Okay. Black and white. Yeah, black and white. No, but I completely agree, though. You know, it's where, where it is and what he has to do. He knows exactly what it takes. Um, and, and again, coach three-time A-10 coach of the year. He still yeah. has the skills to be able to make that happen. I, I think 100% you're right. It's like if you know what it's like at a certain place, you have the experience, or you could take some of those things out of the equation, like you said, mm -hmm. Coach. Like, well, I don't know what this is going to be like. That just saves you another couple hours or a couple weeks yeah. or whatever it may be, right? And then I also feel, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like on player or coaches that coach at their alma mater. Like, it just means a little bit more to them, too. You know, I know we're not in certain situations, but you know what I mean? It's not just a job. You know what I mean? Like, Can't a, be a job. It's a little bit different yeah, than that. Absolutely. It's, it's, too, it's, too, it's too involved now right. to be a job. It's got to, you got to be, you got to live it. And Jim Crowley will live St. Bonaventure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So that uh, recaps them. And now, in a moment, we're going to talk to Seth Greenberg uh, from ESPN, who's been with us all day. Uh, and uh, we'll get with him in just a moment. And then also the commissioner of the Atlanta 10, Bernadette McGlade, we'll talk to her. Uh, before we wrap up our morning session, we still have the other half of the teams to go here uh, from Washington, D.C. What did we gather so far? I don't know what, what you've seen. Uh, what, what's kind of standing out to you? Anything, anything special right now from uh, the first uh, few hours? Man, besides Woj, yeah. <laughs> um, who we chatted a ton about, um, I think just the coaches that are really excited to get their newcomers to build with their returners and the cohesiveness. It seems like everyone still has chemistry to build in the preseason, and that seems like the focus. Okay. What I found yeah. is everybody's happy to be here. Yep. Joy. I'll add me. Me too. I'm Un happy to be here. Undefeated. <laughs> right? Good start to the season. All right, Seth Greenberg uh, is with us now. Uh, 